on stage and uh, I have a big vision. And when I close my eyes and try to get inspired, my vision is a world of people connected to each other in support of one another's well-being. And well-being is an extremely broad term. And I like to use Martin Seligman's way of measuring it. And there's five components. PERMA, P-E-R-M-A, positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning, and accomplishments. And we build out tools to help measure these things. And I use this with my athletes as well. Um, but as we go into this vision, what inspires me and keeps me going along this path is the fact that every human I've ever met has genuinely wanted what's best for other people. Regardless of self-interest, maybe that will damper their path. But genuinely, if you ask somebody, do you want what's best for someone else, they can give you a truthful answer and say yes. And so I feel that the gap, the problem with what I'm having connecting people on this mission that I have is that people have this truthful want to help others, but they don't have the ability to communicate that fact while they're trying to help people. Oftentimes, I'm sure you guys have experienced this, you may try to go help somebody, you maybe you give them a piece of advice, maybe you actually just do a good act, and they don't receive it the way that you thought that they would. Maybe it was a gift that you gave them, you said, this is gonna change your life, and they like read the book that you gave them, and that goes whatever. Like, mm. They're not ready for that change. They're not connected to you in any way. And so what I'm gonna talk about today is a piece of the relationships portion of the, the PERMA acronym, and that's building a connection before trying to make a correction. And I'd like to talk about the corrections first because there's a lot of different ways to correct things. You're in chiropractic, so you may think a bone comes out of place, detect and correct. That's one way to correct something. Yeah, another way is maybe someone says something that's just not truthful and you feel the need to correct it. That's another way to correct something. Something that's deepest to me is lifestyle changes. There's tons of people that I love who make decisions that are damaging to their health. Maybe they have lifestyles that are directly correlated to their state of unhappiness. And you may try to go and help people in your life make changes, and it's like throwing rocks at a brick wall. And so, to connect you guys to this, what I'd like you to do is close your eyes, take a deep breath, and just picture someone in your life that you care about, that makes decisions in their life that may not be the most healthy for what you believe to be their optimal well-being. Think about the changes that you'd like to help them make in their own life. Take another deep breath. Go ahead and open your eyes. So I have a person in my life as well that I'd like to try to help make changes. I've tried so many different strategies over the years, and it wasn't until I was introduced to, um, through the VBC on campus, VCC, VCC on campus, um, Marshall Rosenberg, and empathy in that capacity. I've heard the word empathy, but I've never really connected to it. And, and that's what I'm talking about, is building that connection. So, as I've gone into people's lives, athletes, friends, strangers who have approached me for advice on health and things, I'm sure you guys have experienced that too. You get into the health field, whether you're a student or further along in your career, and people automatically approach you and you're an expert, help me. You've probably also experienced you going to help this person and them not taking your advice. You know, my dad is a perfect example. My dad comes up to me almost every week. I go visit him and he's like, Lance, how did I get rid of this thing? And he's probably going to watch this video, so I'll bring him here. But, <laughs> how did I get rid of this? And he can't, he plays basketball like a machine. But, you know, he goes from three point line to three point line. He doesn't really go under the basket because it's only 20 yards as opposed to the 40 that you could run. But he's got foot pain, ankle pain, knee pain, diet issues, all these things. He's on medications and stuff. And it's like, this is caused by the things that you do. So change the things that you do. It's like, I don't want to change the things that I do. Okay. 
play more basketball, but then you're going to get hurt, and then you're going to get bigger, and then you're going to get more uncomfortable, and then you're going to get unhealthy. And so changing all of the ways that I've approached that has really helped. And what we do now is, or I can speak for myself, what I do now is try to connect to the person before I even move toward doing any correcting. And the connection is not to the need of the correction, it's the need of the feelings that they're having. The needs that aren't being met that is causing them to perform whatever they're performing. And not thinking about understanding why they're in their predicament. Don't try to understand why they're choosing to do all those things because the intellectual understanding of what their predicament is, is not you being in the present moment. And presence is one of the most powerful gifts that you can give to anybody. And that was an Israeli philosopher that I can't think of his name right now who said that. Presence is one of the most powerful gifts you can give anybody. And so, what I charge to you guys is when you're dealing with the person in your life who has these lifestyle changes that you'd like to help them create, don't focus on the changes they need to make. Focus on being present with that person. And this can go for that person and into your careers. If you were trying to correct a bone out of place, don't just go in and correct. Don't think about, oh, all your lifestyle all your background, all that stuff, when they're talking to you, telling you symptoms and telling you all these things, be with that person. Because most of your communication is going to be nonverbal. You're not going to build trust with your words. You'll build trust with your eyes. You'll build trust with your body language and the warmth that you exude with that person. Once someone has full trust in you, that's when you can really affect change in their life. And that's when they'll start making those changes because they have someone who believes what they say, believes what they feel, can understand. You actually saying, I understand what you're feeling, doesn't necessarily mean that they'll get that. Because that's still just you saying, I understand. If I'm here writing down notes like, oh, I understand your pain. I understand, yeah. That probably hurts a lot. Oh man, I can totally, I totally get that. Yeah, I had an injury once too. Yeah, it's no fun. This is me over here. I'm not connecting with this person at all, as opposed to me saying, oh, "Okay." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's me connecting. I don't have to say anything. I, I get it. If I say I get it, that's just distracting from my presence. Because now I'm thinking about something else. I'm not just accepting them and receiving them for what they're giving me. So the focus should be on the person's... No, the focus is on being present. When someone's coming to you and speaking to you, whether it's looking for advice, whether it's just looking for empathy, not very many people other than Dan Lynch will walk up to you and say, I get some empathy. But they'll say it with their eyes, and they'll say it with their body language, and just be present. You don't have to talk back at them. Just receiving that, being present within yourself, is one of the most powerful gifts you can give to anybody. And so, with all of your relationships, not just your patients, not just the people who you want to help change in their life, but every interaction that you have, Try to focus on being present and build a connection with that person before trying to make any corrections for anything. Thank you very much. Dance on stage.